All right, everybody, we're going to talk about different types of data now. So earlier in the class, we talked about different types of studies, like the difference between observational and experimental and that kind of thing. And now we're going to talk about different data that we can gather in our studies. So uh, in general, there are two basic types of, of data. And most people have heard of these before, so I'm not going to belabor them too much. But um, one is qualitative. Okay, and once I've said that, you probably know the other one is what? Quantitative, right? And people use these words a lot, so I don't think that they're anything uh, that's a big shock whenever I say, well, qualitative in general means um, it, it's, it's basically qualities of an object or of a person or of a participant or a subject or whatever. So when I talk about somebody's eye color, that's a quality that I see in that person or hair color. Or if I talk about an, an attribute that they have, so qualities or attributes. Okay, so things like color, names, labels that we're going to put out there, categories. If I want to talk about M&Ms versus Skittles, those are, those are different categories of, of uh, candies. So things like that. Um, in general, these are non-numerical, although sometimes they can be numerical, and we'll talk about that. But they don't mean... Um, they're not about a count or a measure. Okay, so even if they have a number on them, the number is used more for naming or organizing. It's not for counting. So um, something that I can count would be like a, something's weight or something's height or something like that. So qualitative, color of eyes, color of hair, whether or not somebody has glasses, if it's a yes, no answer, it's probably qualitative because we're talking about a quality or a characteristic or an attribute. So those are qualitative versus quantitative, which are number values, numeric values. And they represent in some way counting or measuring. Okay, in some way. So these were not counting or measuring. Okay, so in some way I'm going to do that. So for instance, if I'm talking about um, the temperature in the room, I might say it's 72 degrees in here, and that is a number. And we know that the number represents um, a scale that we would use to measure the temperature in the room, right? Okay. So if it's 72 degrees Fahrenheit, then that's a number, and it talks about that. If I talk about the tomatoes that I have from my fertilizer example, then that is, a, if I'm talking about the weight or the size of them, then that's a number that describes that particular tomato. Um, so let's think about that for a second. In our favorite color example... If we're t gathering the data about that, is that data, favorite somebody's favorite color, is that qualitative or quantitative? Well, it's qualitative, right? Because it's a characteristic. It's something that talks about those people. Okay, so those are the two basic types that you'll see. And then inside of each of those, there are actually categories or levels. So we're going to talk just a little bit about both of those um, in depth. So when I talk about qualitative stuff... There are actually two different kinds of qualitative things that can be going on, okay? And one of those is what we would call nominal data. Nominal data. Okay? And nominal, in general, means a naming process, right? So these are names. They're labels, okay? Um, their categories. So in other words, if I was talking about M&Ms and I wanted to do the different colors, then my, my labels would be red, green, blue, and so on and so forth, right? 
So that could be the name of the category. Or if we were talking about somebody's favorite color of ice cream or favorite type of ice cream, you know, the names could be, okay, different data, vanilla, chocolate, so on and so forth, okay? So that's nominal. We're naming that, okay? The other one is ordinal. Ordinal data, okay? And this is data that can be ordered. Okay, and it can have numbers in it, but it doesn't have to have numbers in it. For instance, if I told you to go rate a movie, okay, then um, you you know you could talk about well it was excellent, it was good, it was poor, it was terrible. Okay. So these are all categories, and we can put them in an order, right? Best to worst or worst to best, depending on how you look at them. And so we can use it to talk about the level, the order that I would put that particular movie in. Or if we're talking about restaurants, we can talk about one star and two star and three stars and so forth, right? And we know that if something's a five-star restaurant, it's probably really expensive and it's probably really good food, okay? That's the way that those, um, those labels are laid out. That's the order that we would put them in, right? And so in that case, the order means something for us, but it doesn't necessarily, and it has a number on it, but it doesn't necessarily mean a lot to us. For instance, can you tell me a number for how much better a five-star restaurant is than a four-star restaurant? We know it's supposed to be better, <laughs> but it's not easy to measure the difference between a five-star. We know it's one star, but what does that mean, right? So what's the difference between a five-star restaurant and a four-star restaurant? Maybe some people use money to determine that. Maybe um, four-star restaurants are about $30 a person, but five-star restaurants are a $50 a person or $100 a person, whatever it is. Um, so there could be some numbers running around in there, but really and truly the difference between a two-star restaurant and a three-star restaurant, mm, how do I know? There's not like a scale that tells me exactly the difference. Okay. On the other hand, I mentioned the temperature in the room earlier. Well, the temperature in the room, there's a scale for that, right? Okay. So these were qualitative. Let's go to quantitative. We said the temperature in the room, that's a number, and it measures something, how warm it is, right? So um, there's, there's two different categories there too, right? Is what I'm saying to you. One of them is quantitative, I'm sorry, inside of the quantitative, one of them is discrete objects. And one of them, some of you might know, if something's not discrete, then it must be continuous. Okay. So inside of quantitative data is discrete and continuous. Well, discrete stuff is, um, I, I call it individual items. Or something that you can't take a portion of. Difficult to take a portion of something. Okay, so for instance, if I'm talking about the number of tomatoes that I have in my um, field, I might say there's 22 tomatoes out there. Or if I'm talking about the people or the cows, I might say there's 15 cows out there. It's t difficult to take a portion of those. Now we know we could cut a tomato in half, but I'm probably not taking that tomato to market once it's been cut in half, right? So individual items, things that we wouldn't necessarily say, this is 1.9 tomatoes, right? That's not the way we count that. We think of them as individual tomatoes. Okay, so that's what we think about there with discrete, whereas continuous is something that can be measured in parts or portions that are easily measured parts, fractions, decimals, 
portions or portions. That's what we're talking about here. So in that case, um, if I'm talking about the temperature in the room, I could, on that scale, talk about that it's 72.9 degrees, right? Okay, so we can discuss that, that there's there are things between 72 degrees and 73 degrees if I have a, a scale a thermometer that is sensitive enough to give me something in between, right? Okay, what else? Um, somebody's height. I don't have to say you're five foot or you're six foot. I can say you're five foot five or you're um, even I could say six and a half inches and that means something to us, right? It's easy to measure it that way. Okay, it's not difficult to say a half of an inch or something like that. So in general, stuff that's continuous is stuff like weight, the weight of the tomato. If it's 3.9 ounces, that's okay. That's not hard for us to figure out, right? So weight is one of the things that's easy to do, portions. Time, and again, if I have a very accurate stopwatch, then I could say 3.7 seconds, and that means something to us, and it's easy to do. And distance, those are three really common situations where I would have something continuous, where I would be trying to say, okay, um, can I take a portion of this thing really easily? Well, yeah, distance, 5.7 feet or something like that. It's not too bad, right? So as long as I can take it and it make, makes sense, it doesn't really t make sense to say 5.7 tomatoes or 5.7 kids, or 5.7 cows, or something like that. Those things just don't make sense. So we wanna make sure that what we're talking about when we're looking at the data types, it makes sense. All right, and then one more. Every um, quantitative piece of data, quanta, sorry guys, tative, piece of data can be counted. I'll say, I say every, but I'll say most every because there may be one or two examples out there I'm not thinking about that are weird. Okay, but most every quantitative piece of data can be um, given as discrete or continuous And then those can be broken down, each of those categories, into two categories. So we have this kind of splitting thing that goes on inside of quantitative data where we can be a little more specific. And inside of there, there's two of those. So, And this is where it gets maybe a little bit confusing for some students, so I want to make sure that everybody's okay here. One is interval notation. Okay, and then the other one is ratio uh, interval notation, I'm sorry, interval data, <laughs> so sorry, and the other one is ratio data, thinking about college algebra here. All right, so interval data is data that has a definite difference, difference in the scale. Okay, so let me explain what I mean there. So for instance, oh my goodness, I can't write. Difference in the scale. So for instance, the difference in temperature from 70 degrees to 71 degrees is the same as, let's say, 83 degrees to 84 degrees, right? There is a one degree, and we're, I'm talking Fahrenheit here, it doesn't matter, you could be talking Celsius, but there's a one degree difference in there, and there's a one degree difference in there. And that difference is something we can actually measure, and it doesn't matter where I am, the difference of one degree is the same. So if I'm at 32 degrees versus 33 degrees, that's one degree different, and that's a, a set difference between those. Um, so. It, that cannot be, I guess, um, misconstrued, in other words. That, that's the same dif difference. So stuff like, um, 
Uh, let me think of an example. I'll give you an example in a second. I'm sorry. I'm trying to come up with what ratio is. So ratio is um, data that can be multiplied or divided multiplied or divided and it's proportionate. Proportionately. Okay. So in other words, here's the difference. So let me let me show you why temperature is not a ratio data. Temperature is interval data. And the reason why is because if I talk about 20 degrees versus 40 degrees, okay, the difference in there, the, if I subtract, it's 20 degrees. And each of those degrees means something. We can measure a degree. However, what we can't say is if it's 40 degrees outside today, it's twice as warm as if it was 20 degrees outside today. And the reason why we can't say that is that there's no set zero where zero means no heat, okay? And so we have a zero degrees, of course, but zero in the case of a temperature rating is just um, an arbitrary thing. We just throw out there the, the zero degrees. It could have easily been different. So, and we know this because look at Fahrenheit versus Celsius. In Fahrenheit, the point at what, which water freezes is 32 degrees, right? But in Celsius, it's zero degrees. But even in Celsius, zero degrees doesn't mean no heat. It just means that's the point where the water freezes. So it's not, there's not any temperature there. It's just somebody chose that point to mean, okay, we're going to um, give it, we're going to give this a meaning and we're going to call it this. So the difference being, like, take um, weight, the weight of the tomato that I mentioned earlier. Okay, if I look at that and I say one tomato is four ounces and another tomato is eight ounces, can we talk about that being proportionate? Okay, so what that means is, is four ounces half as heavy as eight ounces? And the answer is yes. Okay, this is ratio data. And the reason why is because zero ounces literally means no ounces. Okay, it literally means no ounces. So if I have a zero and that means no ounces, it's literally the lack of whatever it is I'm trying to measure, then as I find things that are doubled or tripled, then yes, that's ratio or proportionate reasoning. So in other words, I have to be able to say zero means nothing as far as what I'm measuring, okay? So weight in that case, yeah, that's it. What about distance? Okay, if I drive five miles versus 15 miles, is it true that 15 miles is three times as far? Is 15 miles three times farther than five miles? Well, yeah, it is, right? Okay, and we can look at that data and we can say, oh yes, that's, that's three times as far. And the reason why is what does zero miles mean? Well, zero miles really means no miles, right? I haven't driven anything at all yet, basically, if we're talking about that. Okay, so zero means no miles in this case. So in that case, because I have a true zero that's set and it actually has the meaning of nothing of whatever it is that I'm measuring, now I have ratio data, okay? So there's actually a really interesting little graphic I can show you that kind of gives you this um, relationship in all the different kinds of measurement or kinds of data that we're looking at. So here we go. 
And I can load this into D2L if y'all want to see it. Qualitative data, the top one there that we said, the data type. And the level of measurement is what they call it. I don't really care if you know that or not. But the level of measurement is either nominal, meaning we named it, or ordinal, meaning we put it in order. Okay. Either way, those are just things that are characteristics. Um, they are not quantities or things that I'm counting or measuring. Okay. Color or names or labels, that kind of stuff. Okay, then when I look at quantitative, okay, we've got discrete, which means individual items. We've got continuous, which means I can't really split it up very, or I can take any fraction of it I want, so 3.9. So to me, I think, oh, time is very difficult to say one minute versus two minutes. It could be one minute and 22 seconds, right? So it's got that in-between filled in. Um, and so over there, I talk about, okay, Interval, well, those are interval and ratio inside of discrete. So there's those two different levels that I can measure inside of discrete, and then interval and ratio inside of continuous. So again, where interval is they have a constant difference, and that difference means something, and ratio means they have a constant ratio in between um, different data points, and those differences mean something. So, for instance, here's an, a question. Um, is this discrete or continuous? I took measurements of time that it takes people to walk a mile. Well, that's time, so it's continuous, right? So, and different people might take, I don't know, 10 minutes to walk a mile, and it might be 10.3 minutes, I don't know. So that anytime it's time, that's a continuous measurement. The number of calendar years, such as 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, well, those are individual calendar years, right? Okay, time to walk a mile, sorry. Continuous. Okay, calendar years. Okay, discrete, right? So in other words, if I'm talking about calendar years, I don't say, well, it's the year 2020 and a half. No, we're either in 2020 or we're in 2021, right? We're not in 2020 and a half. So that's, that's the difference. And there's a definite mark of time where it changes at midnight on New Year's Eve, right? One was in the first year, one's in the second year. Okay, how about the number of horses on a ranch? If I was trying to measure the number of horses on a ranch. Well, hopefully I'm not going to talk about 20 and 3 fourths of a, of a horse, right? So those are discrete. They're individual items that we're measuring there. Okay. And then the last one, how about the amount of milk in a glass? If I measure it versus if you measure it, or 30 different people measure or pour a glass of milk, how, and what's the difference? So is that milk going to be discrete? Is mine going to be exactly two ounces and yours is going to be exactly five ounces, or is it continuous? Okay, hopefully you said continuous because you might pour a glass that's 2.5 ounces. Okay, it's not... It's something that I can easily take a fraction of an ounce of milk and, and pour that into a glass, right? Okay, how about this? Let's talk about le levels of measurement, okay? Identify the level of measurement for each of the following sets of data. Numbers on uniforms of soccer players. Okay, so let's be a little bit careful here because this is a number, but I want to talk about whether it's qualitative or quantitative. Is a number on a uniform measuring or counting something? No, it's not, right? So a number on a uniform just is so that I can look at that 
player on the field and say, oh, that's number 12, that must be so-and-so, right? So it's in order for me to be able to name that player or locate that player on the field, it is not so that I can measure him or count him in any way, okay? So that makes this qualitative data even though they have numbers on them. Okay, so be careful, not all numbers are quantitative. Okay, so then when I looked at the qualitative, oops, let me find the right thing, sorry, um, the right piece of paper. When we looked at qualitative, we said, well, there's two different kinds of qualitative. There's nominal data that uses it to measure something, and then there's ordinal data that puts it in order. So the question is, are those soccer players' numbers putting them in order? Like maybe one's the best player or one's the worst player or something like that. And the answer is no, it's not, right? So we are not ordering them. We're naming them. This is so that I can tell where Susie Q is out on the field, right? <laughs> that's, that's the whole point of that is to be able to name it. So this is nominal data. Naming them. Okay. All right. Let's do another one. Student rankings of the cafeteria. Okay, student rankings of the cafeteria. And it doesn't matter if it's excellent, good, fair, poor, or if it's um, three star, four star, five star, that kind of thing. If I'm ranking the cafeteria, then what? That describes the quality in the cafeteria. That's not measuring or counting the cafeteria in any way. That's just telling people what I think about the cafeteria's quality, right? Okay, so if you can name it back to quality, then it's that. However, rankings, five star is better than two star, right? So it's not nominal, it's actually giving some kind of order. So that one is ordinal data. Okay. Cool beans. All right, let's do another one. Um, how about, this is great, if you're a runner in the marathon, runner's time in the Boston Marathon. What do we think about that? Well, time is given as a number, right? So is that number qualitative or quantitative? Well, if I'm measuring time, then that actually is measuring, right? How long did it take you to run the Boston Marathon? How many hours were you running, right? So um, whenever I look at that, that's actually quantitative, right? That's not qualitative, that's quantitative. Yay, okay. So I'm measuring or counting. So it's quantitative. All right, so then I got to look a little bit deeper. There's two other categories, right? Is it discrete or continuous? Well, we talked about this. Time is not discrete. It's not going to be that they, they every runner ran exactly five hours or 10 hours or whatever. It might be 10.2 hours or 5.9 hours. So time is continuous. It's hard to split it into individual items. Okay, so then once I have that, now I need to look and say, okay, so if it's continuous, are we looking at interval data or are we looking at ratio data? Okay, so we can tell the difference between 10 hours and 9 hours, right? That's an hour. But the question is, is that the same ratio as, um, well, is 10 to 5 hours the same as 4 to 2 hours ratio-wise? Or is it an interval? And the answer is time actually does have a true zero. Okay, zero hours means no hours. There is a true zero there, right? So if I have that, then what is it, ordinal or ratio? And in my head, I hope I hear you saying, this is ratio data, which it is. Absolutely. So that is the difference in the different types of data that we have. And there's, it's nothing but a bunch of de definitions basically 
but um, hopefully you can see the differences in them through the different examples. I'm gonna give you one little problem that we can work. So we're gonna do some actual math a little bit, not, not anything crazy or anything. And then uh, we'll move out from there. So um, if we're talking about, I wanna go back to this distance one distance and I want to look at the difference between um, interval and ratio. So if we say it's 10 miles from Commerce to Campbell and if we say it's 20 miles from Commerce to Greenville now those aren't exact, but that's the numbers I'm giving you so that it'll work out nice and evenly. Okay, so if that's true, let's assume those numbers are right. If we have a definite zero which means what again? Zero miles means no miles. Okay, if we have that, which we do, zero miles really means I'm sitting in the same place. In this case, zero miles would mean I have not left Commerce yet. I'm still sitting in Commerce, right? So that's zero miles that I've traveled. Okay, then I can look at it and I can do these, put these numbers into ratios. Okay, that's what ratio data means or proportional thinking. So in other words, if I can go 10 miles to get to Campbell, but I have to go 20 miles to get to Greenville, then that's equal to one half. Okay, so is it true that it would be half as far? That's a ratio? Yes, okay. Or you could do your ratio the other way if you wanted to. So you could put the 20 miles on top and the 10 miles on bottom, it does not matter. And when you reduce these down, you would have two times as far. Is that true? Is 20 miles twice as far as 10 miles? And the answer is yes, okay? So either way you think about that, these are true. This is a yes, and this is a yes. So ratios work here. with distance. And ratios work whenever I'm talking about time. They don't work whenever I'm talking about temperature. So that has to be interval um, data. All right, that is it for different types of data. So it's really a bunch of definitions, I'm sorry. But hopefully it makes sense and hopefully you can use that to do your homework. All right, thanks, have a great one.